What's up everybody? Dan here with Dan and Sarah Makers and this is part two of our homemade DIY mask video series of two. <laughs> series so of two, yeah. So in this particular video we're going to look at building a different type of mask. This one's going to be a pleated mask and we're using a different filtration media which as you can see is just a home filter for your HVAC system. These are readily available and they filter out all sorts of stuff including very small stuff. So these can be purchased at Home Depot, Lowe's, any box store, probably pretty much anywhere. Just get creative and there are a lot of them out there. There are different rating systems. 3M has their own system of rating. There's a commercial industrial system of rating and then there's Home Depot's specific system of rating. So it's kind of hard to compare apples and oranges. In this case we're using the 1900, I believe it's the MPA or uh, maximum particle allowance or something like that. 1500 and above gets the really small particles and I think they go all the way up to like 2900. Oh, wow. So the 1900 is still pretty good. So there's a lot of filter fabric in here and we are gonna pull this apart and see how much is actually in a 20 inch by 20 inch filter. Okay, let's do this. All right. <clears throat> I'm gonna use my seam ripper. Works pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah. So one thing to note, there is a front and a back side to these filters. Basically which side air gets drawn through the dirty air and then the clean air. So you'll see a little arrow on this. So I would say let's get a pen or something and just make a little dot on one side so, so we know. Is this the side for your face? This is the outboard face. So this is facing outside. Okay, turn it over. And this is towards your face. And it's just cardboard with a metal mesh that basically keeps the filter from collapsing one way or another as air is drawn through it. So let's let's label the inside, okay? Okay. This is the inside. So in You got a pair of needle nose behind you. Okay. Hey. Yay! That's, so that's about 20, 20 inches by 8 feet of usable material probably, filter fabric. That's pretty good. So this is already pleated, pleated to probably pretty close to 1 inch. One, uh, 3 quarters of an inch. Quarters. So that's really convenient. So this is an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. Very standard size. And I have marked one inch strips all the way along here and then I've skipped the first two inches and then I fold down, skip two inches, fold down, skip two inches, fold down. So it looks like this when I'm done. And there's a reason I've made this out of an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper. This is fairly common to have around the house. So um, you can stitch each side and we're going to make this a double layer mask because I don't know if you want this up against your face or not. So this pattern will be used for t-shirt fabric 
and this will be used on the outside. So Dan has graciously given up one of his t-shirts. So we're going to cut this into an eight and a half by 11 chunk of fabric. Thank you. Okay, I've laid out the filter fabric and I'm going to trim off the outside edge here where we peeled the cardboard off the border. I have my eight and a half by 11 piece of jersey fabric and I'm laying it over the top of the filter fabric. Now, based on where your filter fabric is creased, you may not be able to follow these notches, notch guides, but basically you want to skip two and then fold one. Skip two, fold one. And I need to put a stiffening agent in the top to make sure it fits my nose, the nose bridge. So there are some options for things you might have at home. <laughs> you could use a paper clip, a chunk of copper wire, inflation, or you could use foil, which I think is what I'm going to use because it just seems like the most common thing one might have around. Okay, so I think if you have really thin foil, you want to cut about a 16 inch piece. That looks like I'm only 16 inches. And then I'm going to fold this in half. I'm going to cut the okay. six inches. It's right there. So the hot glue gun is hot gluing, heating. So now it is six inches long instead of eight. eight. And now we're going to lay it inside the first pleat on the outside of the filter, not the inside. So that is way. Now that's sandwiched in. Now remember, this is the outside, this is the inside. Lay the jersey knit over the top of the inside. Now it's going to be longer than the piece of filter fabric. Roll that out so that it's the filter fabric isn't abrading your nose. Oh, thank you. Clip. Let's clip each one. Of yeah, okay. let's do that. Clip. Since we're skipping every other one, you're going to have to force one of them to be folded outwards instead of inwards. Last one.
are just going to add some elastic to it on both sides and stitch it together. So fold this last piece of filter fabric down or trim it off and then fold your, let's just trim it off. I think that'll be better. Okay. Then fold your jersey knit up and then we'll just put this elastic. It's really thin elastic. So we'll do seven inches. Stitch that in or you could glue it in, hot glue it in, either way. And then stitch it in on the other side as well. And then you'll catch that loop and stitch it into the top as well. Alright, so I have the elastic stuck in about 3 eighths of an inch and I'm going to reverse over it and then stitch forward again. stitch all the pleats. And the big deal here is to just catch all the fabric when you're folding it. It doesn't have to be perfectly aligned. the top you don't want to forget to put your elastic loop from the back through and try and catch all the fabric layers all four fabric layers and then when you get to the top make sure you reverse so that you're getting more than just one layer of stitching on the elastic now we'll do the other side. This time we'll start at the top and work our way down. So that is your finished mask. This is the exterior that's got the filter fabric and the interior has a nice soft t-shirt jersey knit in it. Now all you do is just trim off your threads and you have a mask. All right, thanks for watching part two of our DIY mask series. This is the pleated mask. We use some pretty basic items that most people should have access to or probably already have in their houses, um, from aluminum foil to elastic to filter fabric and a t-shirt. <laughs> so it's pretty accessible. You can always modify these to fit you better or add additional layers with that one filter. We Estimated we could probably get 16 of these masks mm -hmm. out of that one filter if you wanted to double up you could um, We keep talking about the jersey knit on the inside. That is just for comfort. That's not for filtration That's not a recommended filtration fabric and and this is not something that is recommended by the CDC This is a homemade something is better than nothing Can option <laughs> So, um, a few things to remember. Make a mask and wear it before you're making the other ones. Wash your hands. Wash your hands after you made the first one and then when you start making the other ones. Third, 
disinfect your space before you start making all the ones to uh, distribute. Giving these to your friends <laughs> and all that good stuff. So, um, And hopefully I can get this kind of pattern thing together. But basically you're just making a cold accordion folds in an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So that was the whole point is to try and make this as accessible to somebody as possible. Yeah. So hopefully that helps you when you're trying to make a really simple mask when you maybe can't find them anywhere else. Yeah. And make smart choices in how you actually live and do things. I saw people at the store wearing gloves so they wouldn't touch things with their bare hands and they were touching things and explaining to a cashier why they were wearing gloves and then they immediately put their cell phone in their hand and walk around with their cell phone in carried a in their gloved hand, hand that they've just touched stuff with and, and then put they put it, it by their face. <laughs> so pay attention to what you're doing, uh, cross-contamination, things like that. Uh, also, wear these properly. If you don't wear them properly, they're not going to work as well. Anybody who's done concrete demolition or any type of building demolition, you'll pull these, even the real masks off, and you'll have these concrete and black dust streaks down the side of your nose because they don't seal very well there. That's the difference between a mask and a respirator. So, yeah, just keep that in mind. Yep. I think that pretty much covers it. Yeah. Wash your hands, don't touch your face. <laughs> yeah. So, until next time, hopefully this helped you guys out. Remember to like, subscribe, share, comment. And this is Dan with Dan. And Sarah Makers. Get out there. Oh, wait a second. Stay inside <laughs> and, and do, do something. something. Bye. Bye-bye. Right, and you'll probably want to wear gloves so you don't slice your fingers on the oh, Really the fine chunks. chicken wire. Yeah. Watch yourself. There's some sharp cookies on these. There's one side and one side left. I'm gonna use this for my pea plants so they can climb. Ow. Ow. They're sharp. They poke very, very well.